welcome Sri Radha Govinda, who is joining us for this session uh, from Mayapur, India. And um, she had this is not her first session and um, on the retreat. And I'm hoping this won't be her last session for BYS either. Uh, but Sri Radha Govinda is a South Indian by descent and has traveled extensively and still does with her husband Kuntea. She is a qualified astrologer, uh, has an astrology, astrology guru, and is also a disciple of Jay Pataka Swami. Uh, she is the author of many different books, um, including How to Mess Up Your Life with Astrology. And if you just look at the title, it will tell you a lot about her because she's one of those bold and out there people. I always say she's a lion behind the microphone. Uh, one interesting thing, I was thinking, what could I tell you about her that you may not know? And uh, one of the things is that she has her own personal language. And only if you hang out with her a little bit longer will you pick it up. I, I, I was thinking, how, what, would, what, what would I call it? So I decided it's going to be called personish. So when Radha speaks personish, it means that she is speaking about the Maya Briggs personality system or the Enneagrams. And it's just like all in alphabet and numbers. It's like, here's one. No, that person's a two. Like, that's Janus, you know? Like, so when I hang out with her, she's always speaking personish because she's always looking into the nature of people and how it can be engaged on the spiritual platform. So I'm going to stop yapping and hand you over to Sri. And uh, we'll be fielding questions. You can put it into the chat. If you want to ask a live question, you can also say, I have a live question. We'll only take as much as we can, uh, depending on the length of the session. So over to Sri. Thank you so much, Rukmini. And thank you to all the organizers. We're having fun organizing this event. And also, all of you students are also having fun, I can see. And some of you wrote very beautiful emails. And I was glad to hear that you're having lots of fun. So we'll have a little bit more fun today. Um, if I can request you, if you can, and if you feel comfortable, I'd like to see you. If you switch on your videos, if, if you're comfortable, that'll be a nice connection. We can see each other. Yeah, thank you. And I see some familiar faces and thank you for coming back today. I thought after the astrology and the yoga, you did some difficult moves and you got stuck in that yoga move and I didn't know if you would make it for the session to discover your talents today. <laughs> but I'm glad you made it. So let me ask you a question. How many of you think that you've got a very special talent? You can just do like this <laughs> to the camera. <laughs> okay, that's not bad. How many of you think that you don't have any talent? Like that. You can do like this, okay. How many of you are not sure actually? <laughs> okay, so good news and bad news. Which one do you wanna hear first? Good or bad? <laughs> the good news is whether you know that you're talented or not, or you don't, you're not sure if you know or not, what I want to share with you today is going to be about how God sees talent in us and how we need to connect with that in order to make peace with who we are and become the best version of ourselves that God can accept us and love us. So, I mean, you will hear a lot about motivation. You know, um, most of us, we feel very enthusiastic when we hear a motivational video, you know, those few minutes of something very, uh, that activates certain channels in us, certain chakras in us. But then we actually see that it goes like that, the motivation, and then slowly <laughs> over a few days, depends on uh, some of us within a few weeks, some of us within a few days, some of us a few hours, the motivation fades. So what I want to share with you today is going to be a little bit the other side of other perspective rather than what the world or the, let's say the material world, the mundane world, the world which believes that external tangible success is what is talent about. So we're going to take a look at uh, something 
which is more, um, it's a seed of what talent actually means. See, this whole thing about talent is hyped too much because it's all in the minds of individuals, like say an artist. How many, of, how many artists do we have here? How many of you consider yourself an artist? Okay. What does it mean, an artist, right? I mean, each of you can come up with an idea. What does it mean, artist? What does it mean to you? What does it mean to Rukmini? What does it mean to Surabi? What does it mean to Nirvana, Havisha? What does it mean? Probably each of us will come up with a different idea. You take a piece of art, take a piece of artwork, then you ask, this is actually a painting from medieval German painting. So you take this and say, is this beautiful? And some of us will say yes. Some of us will say, it's okay. Some of us will say, no, it's not attractive. So again, you see, it's all in the minds of individuals, whether it's the definition of talent or whether it's the definition of um, success or definition of um, happiness. It's very dependent on what's your core value. So there is, as Rukmini was saying, one of the systems, it's called human design. This human design helps us to harmonize with the talent of God or talent of the universe, the universal nature, the nature of spirit. When we say nature, planets are included in nature because they are very... Um, they are the covering of nature because nature is not just trees and plants and earth, but, but it's actually what covers all that. That's the planets. So all these planets, they're reflected in, within our body, within our mind, within our psyche. So this, in, the, in this microcosm, those of you who were here with the astrology and the yoga, we discussed in depth about this concept. So what this human design does is it breaks down talent, it breaks down natures into different categories, which is harmonizing, which is in union with the universal talent. Because motivation, what is the motivation for which we want to express our talent? That's like the um, bottom line of this human design. I will be sharing the link in the chats here um, to... Let me just do it right now. You can, you know, if you want to discover more about this human design, you can take a test and see what is your type and get more information about this system, which in summary, why this human design is beautiful is because this material world, everybody is after this mundane success of how much money you have, how many people liked your video, how many subscribers do you have? Everything is in numbers, which is again in the fame is in the minds of people. It's not real. You see, you can't eat it. It's not a sandwich that can fill our hunger. It's something in the minds of people. So you have to ask yourself, what kind of talent do you want to connect with? A talent that is going to rise and fade as this particular material body is going to grow and die and decay. And then with that, the talent is gone. Or do we want to connect with the talent which is actually um, God-like? In other words, it's God's work is always in through the different lifetimes. We only see ourselves in this particular body with this identity, with this name, but actually God has a plan through lifetimes. He remembers our previous life. He remembers our present life, previous actions, and he knows very well what are the options we have right now and what are the possibilities in the future. So he has a plan for us. So today I want to talk more about what stops us from connecting with that talent. Mm, see, being famous is a nice thing. You can use it for helping people. Uh, if that's in the best interest, if you want to help people, fame can help you. But wanting to be famous is actually a very miserable thing because it makes us lose our talent. It makes us wear masks that 
we start pretending to be somebody we think that people want to see. And we don't actually connect with the real talent that we have as souls. And we don't allow God to work on us to manifest the talent that we have intrinsically within us. So in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is explaining how you can, I mean, I'm going to like, speak about talent in the three modes okay three modes of nature what are the three modes goodness passion and ignorance there was a little boy seven years old this is 500 years ago in india and this little boy was called by the guru and the guru asked him what do you want you can get anything you want what talent do you want what um dish do you want to eat? What kind of games do you want to play? You can ask for anything and you will get it. And the boy started singing. Guru Bhakuti Beku Hiriyara Karune Beku Virukuti Beku Vishnu Aradhani Beku Vara Mantra Japa Beku Tapa Beku Paragati Ge Tapa Beku Paragati Ge Siri Hayavada Nana Paramanu he basically asked for things which were not things at all, <laughs> nor were they temporary talents that can help us achieve tangible items, but rather he asked for certain values having which you can achieve anything in life. And I don't want to tell you what exactly he said until I hear from you. Here, meaning you can type it, type it out from the side, side the chat there. What would you like to have if you could have anything in life? Please write there. I want to see a bunch of a list of things. Anything. What would you like to have? What talent would you like to have? Or what kind, anything. What do you want to have? You can have anything. Let's say God comes and says, you can have anything you want. What do you want? Determination. Okay, Deva Kanya. Krishna Prema. Okay. Compassion, fulfillment. Very nice. Anything else? Something tangible that you think can help you? Rukmini, you want more money to, <laughs> to do more preaching work? <laughs> To meet Srila Prabhupada, empathy. What else? Lots and lots of money. Exactly. That's exactly what I was waiting for. Thank you, Rukmini. So my next question would be, why would you want a lot of money? What would you do with money? And better Wi-Fi, she says. Yeah, if you have money, you can get better Wi-Fi. But what do you, why, why do you want money? What do you want to do with money? I think you're all being too shy. Spend it for what? That's my question. Spend the money for what? What would you do with money? Spend it on, get a student dormitory house. Very nice. Get a dormitory. Let's say we just put a symbol of a house here. That's like a dormitory. Okay, and Rukmini, how would you feel once you get a dormitory for students? How would it make you feel? Why would you, in other words, why do you want a dormitory? What is it going to give you? In other words, how are you going to feel by getting a dormitory and doing whatever you're going to do? I mean, I, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of nice answers. I don't know what you're going to do with the private jet. I'd, I'd really be interested to hear that. Cow protection, very nice, very noble. Take care of devotees. I'd like to know how exactly and what, how, what is that going to make you feel if you take care of devotees? Allow students to stay. Yeah, that's fine. It, <laughs> it stress you. But besides stressing you, what's the positive emotion that you're going to feel by achieving that? activity what would rukmini become <laughs> you're already a teacher you're already a guide you're already a 
counselor. Yes, very nice contribution. Perfect. Okay, so what you can see here on the board, um, I mean, each of you are giving good examples, but I'm gonna take this particular example right now. <clears throat> so we say we want to have money. So the key word here is have. I want to have money. And then we want to basically do something with the money, build a goshala, build a dormitory. And then the real goal of doing that is to contribute, contribution. That's the being aspect. In other words, Rukmini wants to be a contributor to humanity's improvement, growth. So she wants to contribute. And so she wants to feel, she wants to be a contributor. Now, Rukmini, I'll ask you this question. You can just nod for this one. Can you contribute in an effective way without a dormitory? Can you contribute effectively without having lots and lots of money? Okay, very good. Next question. So she, her answer for both was yes. Next question. Rukmini, is it possible that you can have lots and lots of money and you may not end up building a dormitory or somebody else not build the goshala? Is it possible? Yes. And is it possible that you could have a dormitory and still you don't actually feel that you're contributing or you don't end up contributing. Very good. So this is the bottom line. This is Krishna's words. When Krishna is speaking about the modes, what he's saying is in Bhagavatam, it is explained, Srimad Bhagavatam is a text. It's a, it's, um, there are 12 cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam and this is one of the 18 Puranas and it's, it's a nectar, it's like a very ripened fruit of knowledge. So in this Srimad Bhagavatam, it is explained how the three modes, the ignorance, the passion and goodness, in Sanskrit we say tamoguna for ignorance, tamas, rajoguna for passion, and sattvaguna for goodness. So it is explained in Bhagavatam that this aspect of ignorance or tamas is that having it's 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 mentioned as dravya shakti so dravya shakti are all the things that we want to have the private jet that we want to have the lots and lots of money that we want to have all those ingredients the dravya the dravya shakti are the, those tangible things the things that you can touch so those are the things which are in the mode of tamas and they are they belong in the category of having and the, we want to build a dormitory, we want to build a goshala, we want to help the devotees, take care of devotees. We want to do things, right? We want to study a lot and become very high, ed highly educated people. So that studying aspect and after becoming educated, we want to work in a particular field. All those belong in the Kriya Shakti. And Kriya Shakti is that ability to um, act, to ability to action, ability for action. Then we have Sattva Guna. In Sattva Guna, we manifest, it is Jnana Shakti. Sattva Guna is Jnana Shakti. And in Jnana Shakti, we know, we are. And according to Bhagavad Gita and according to Krishna, if you can be what you actually want as a result of having, doing, etc. If you want to be a contributor, you want to be a devotee care person, you want to be a teacher, you want to be educated, you want to have, you want to be healthy. All these things are the aspect of being. So if you can, if you can start being it, you don't necessarily need a gym to be healthy. Am I right? You don't need a home gym. I mean, right now we are in the lockdown. I have friends in South Africa who are freaking out because they cannot go to the gym. <laughs> but if somebody has the determination, they can work out at home. You can just do sit-ups. You can just do stretches. So you don't necessarily require the Kriya Shakti or the Dravya Shakti in order to manifest something. However, if you are healthy by, in, 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 let's say, if you're determined to be healthier, you, want, you are healthy, you will find ways to 
do things, and then you'll find ways to have a good body. But having a good gym subscription, <laughs> having the gym very close to your house does not mean that you're going to be healthy. So the point is, by selling your painting or, or by making your video viral, which is again having, it's in the aspect of Dravya Shakti, is having followers, having likes, having money. It doesn't necessarily make you do things that you actually want to do in order to feel like an artist. Because a good artist doesn't care how many paintings they sell. Or a good YouTuber doesn't so much care. I mean, this is, this is a, how do you say? A yogi YouTuber I'm talking about. <laughs> Somebody who is <laughs> truly interested in the benefit of others and is not so interested in fame and money necessarily, but somebody who just wants to share and believes that God will send followers that God thinks should um, listen to my talks. Then to be a successful YouTuber, again, we would have to redefine success. Does it just mean having a lot of subscribers? I don't want to mention some particular names, but we have so many celebrities who just basically shake their body and they have millions and billions of followers. So what are they essentially being? So it's a question to ask ourselves. Okay, you want to have fame. What do you want to do with fame? Ask yourself. Or let's say you want to have a title, you want to have a degree. What do you want to do with that degree? And then ask yourself, doing that, what do you want to actually be? So if you start out with, I want to have a great gym, then I will work out, then I will be healthy it'll never work because the nature of material world is perverted. But if we start saying, I want to be healthy and I'll start with what I have. I want to become educated. I will start with what I have. I want to feel connected with others. And I'll start with relationships that I have right now. I'll connect with my mother. I'll connect with my father, my siblings, my friend, my neighbor that I hate. I will try to connect with them. Then doing that, will slowly eventually bring us to having many relationships or having a partner because we need to complete our lessons to get to having something. Does it make sense, this point? So if we start with being, then doing and having will be easy and natural. If you feel rich, you will do, naturally you will do charity, you will like, taking care of devotees, building a dormitory, cow protection. So these things you will naturally do if you are being generous, being a person who wants to give. And then you will end up having things that people who are rich have. But if you go the other way around, we get frustrated. I want a lover. I want a partner. So we frantically search for a partner. And then we end up with the wrong partner. And we do the wrong thing and we become the wrong person. But instead, if we start out being the right person, doing the right things in relationship, then we end up with the right person. So we have to start with sattva. Then everything, the rest follows. I've had personal experiences in my life. I've shared with Rukmini in the past, you know, frantically searching for that success, frantically searching for that um, validation from others that I am successful and I have something to contribute. But when I started out wanting to have and then do, 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 it never came to that being. But then being, what does it, like you may ask, what does it mean for me right now? That brings us to the, again, the human design concept that most of us, about 85% of us, or even more, 90%. For 90% of us, we have, we have a, let's say we are supposed to respond to the universe. In other words, most opportunities, most relationships, most uh, whatever you want to learn, whatever you want to do or be, it comes to you. And all you have to do is just respond. Think, think and look back into your lives. Those best relationships that worked out for you, 
maybe friendship, maybe with teacher, student, maybe with whoever, partners. How much of it worked because you were running behind it? You were trying to make that relationship work, although it was everything was going against, but you really wanted it. You put so much of your energy into it. You were swimming across the current, swimming against the current, and you were trying to get that thing. What? Just take a look into your own life and see what was the end result of it. Usually, according to this particular system of human design, usually we end up frustrated and we look back and say, I could have done without it. I wasted so much time. But instead, if we wait for the universe to give us the right opportunities, and when it comes, the person comes and we get a particular proposal, we get an invitation for the Bhakti Yoga retreat on perspectives. <laughs> we accept it. We respond to it. And then we find the next and the next and the next steps. So what I'm trying to share with you today is this principle. You don't have to find talent. Talent will find you. In other words, if you stay in harmony with nature, with your body, with your soul, with God, you will see somebody will invite you to their home for lunch and they're saying, give me 10 minutes. I'm going to just play some music I'm playing. I'm recording something. You listen to it. You pick up an instrument and you start playing. You start touching it. You start playing and you say, hey, actually, I can play music. <laughs> then who knows? You may actually end up being a musician. And let's not forget, for those of you who believe in reincarnation, like I said, God works on us. As not just this body works on the soul. He's trying to help us develop that talent, the soul's talent. So we may not see what we have done in our previous life. In our previous life, maybe we have invested so much time in learning music and the ragas. And this lifetime, somehow or another, we are not connected with it. But we have it in us. We have that inclination. And maybe we are um, overcome. Let's say we are clouded. We are in this delusion of success of what the world is describing success. And we are not actually connecting with how we are feeling or how we feel about, I'm giving an example music, but it could be anything. So that's why we usually end up in that zone of, I don't know if I have any talent or not, because we don't know what is talent. We don't know what is success. We don't know what it means to feel happy or feel good or contribute. If Rukmini thinks, unless and until I build this dormitory, I am not successful. Is she right or wrong? Yeah, I mean, it, it's probably wrong. Depends on many other, um, I mean, many other, um, how do you say, considerations. But that could be what is covering her from discovering her talent for two reasons. Reason number one, <clears throat> even from a very materialistic perspective, building the student dormitory may not necessarily be the best she can do. She can actually probably do something better, you know, from a very materialistic point of view. And then another point is this, maybe that's not what she's meant to do. Maybe she's, she's supposed to be doing something else. So that's when we were speaking about Saturn the last time. Whenever our plans fail, it's the way God is saving us. Because God is saying, don't go that road. There's a dead end there. So he's trying to prevent us. You see, our life is always like these turnings, many, many turns. We cannot see what's around the corner, but Krishna can see, God can see. So he's trying to protect us from accidents, from waste of time in a particular relation, particular career, particular thing. So all we need to do is accept our limitations, that we are not God, we cannot just get anything. Second, redefine success, redefine talent, because becoming in sync with God's idea of talent. And then the third thing, don't run after things, respond to things respond and then you'll see that you will feel i mean at least for me personally it's been like that the more i've tried to do that 
even even externally more opportunities happen better than what i had expected there is a wait time and that wait time what we need to do is this take care of ourselves no not thinking once i get that universe once i get into that university once i get that particular job once i get that particular relationship then i will be happy it is like this when i have then i will do then i will be <laughs> it doesn't work if you want to be happy start being happy with now here today then start doing things that you like to do with whatever you've got then you will have things that you deserve or you are destined to have how are we doing with time okay we are half an hour into i think we'll start taking questions i i do have a few more things to share maybe the questions will bring up we'll open the mic for the questions uh hi shri no one has written their name down to say they want to ask a question but gora has a question hi <laughs> i wanted to know um how do you know if you're running or responding to a situation you could think you're responding but you may be running how would you different good question thank you gora so there are different ways i'm going to give you a few principles here some of them will apply more to you some others may apply less but you can ask yourself these questions first question you can ask yourself is it worth investing my time my energy in in this path in this direction you can ask yourself and then that should bring you to the answer of what do you want to be by responding to that or acting on that because sometimes we <laughs> if we honestly and frankly take a look the answer will be something like i want to be a controller that's why i want to i want to do this or the answer will come i don't believe in god i don't have faith that krishna has the best plans i think i have better plans so i want to do this then when we arrive there it's time to take a different direction then another thing this is so important personally for me this is like the top of all these questions that i'll share with you now um do i have something to prove are you trying to prove something are you trying to prove that you are great are you trying to prove that you are very intelligent are you trying to prove that you are lovable so we have to ask ourselves am i trying to prove something and if the answer is yes i'm trying to prove to this person that i'm smarter than them the obvious answer is don't do it okay the next thing do i have something to prove this is another question sorry this is a prove is the first one do i no am i trying to pretend to know something sometimes people ask us questions that happens to me all the time people ask me a question like you're asking how do i know when <laughs> when i'm responding and when i'm actually initiating and trying to control one way is to think i know the answer gora i know it so well i can write books on it and i've done it i've never made a bad decision in my life and i've always responded and you see how successful my life is thank god i'm not exactly saying that but there is the tendency that we all have we all have the tendency to pretend to be certain pretend to be certain you see actually there's a there's a very nice quote it says the problem is not that you don't know the problem is when you don't know but you think you know and you assert it that's when you, it's your greatest danger to the world <laughs> okay so how do you what is the question do i am i pretending to be certain that's another question or i mean it can be put in different ways am i trying to convince everybody that i know you know things like that it's similar to the proving but it's more about certainty then um, yeah i mean those are the two questions main two questions and then i have other questions but maybe some other question will come up that can address that does it help her uh, yeah the sky sky has a question tree sky if you can unmute
We don't hear you. Uh, Sky, you're unmuted, but somehow we don't hear you. So I'm just going to read your question, if that's okay, because you typed it out. Um, where is it here? Just give me a second. Yeah. When you say accept our limitations, where would the line be where we should push ourselves or accept that maybe we should change direction? Very good question. Again, another question I would ask myself in this situation would be, Am I holding on to something that's not good for me? Sometimes, if you give me my personal example. In my family, everybody went into higher education, their master's degree, etc. And they wanted to, they would always ask me about my choices in life. And I took a different path. But there was always that I was holding on to the fact that I had to like, again, all these questions, I wanted to prove to them that I'm smart. I wanted to prove that I am successful. And then there was also this aspect of um, holding on to something from the past that's not good for me. And then trying to make a future decision based on that. Does it make sense? Yeah, I mean, that, that's, yeah, that's what comes to my mind. Anything else you want to share, Rukmini, about it? Um, when to push or let go? I just, I'm so bad at that. <laughs> I don't know if I should share. Um, I think questioning our motives, like, it's just, I've, I've come through situations where sometimes I've questioned my motive and said it's good, questioned my motive, said it's good for years. And then, like, three years later, I'm like, oh, it wasn't good, like, in terms of my so I think we have layers of motivation. Mm -hmm. And what I was thinking is that sometimes that motivation is mixed, you know? Yeah. Sometimes it's like there is that good part that like, yes, I have a good reason for doing it. But then there's also the other part that maybe there's some bit of a remnant of a negative reason for doing it. So sometimes it's complex, you know? Yeah. I don't know if that's a contribution, but my thoughts. No, thank you, yeah. And you have to see if it's going to help you to grow and it's something you really like to do because there is a calling or it's again because of certain baggage, all these psychological insecurities that we carry and it's just a reaction to that. So sometimes I, that's at least how, how I'm trying to see my life and decisions with this two options. And uh, that brings us also to this other motivation. This is, this is a huge thing. If you want to take away this one message from this talk today, it would be about constantly check with yourself, what is your motivation? And all these questions that I asked, am I trying to prove, am I trying to show off that I'm certain? All these things can be indicators of that motivation. Mm -hmm. Then another tool that can help us immensely, that's changed my life, is this system which is connected to Vedic astrology, but it's much simpler and it's very directive. It's called Enneagram. So Enneagram, I'm going to share the link here with you all. So Enneagram system is nine different types of personalities represented by nine different astrological planets. And that's a, this is a link for taking the test to see what type you are. So each type has a natural motivation. See, because something that's good for Rukmini may not be good for me. In other words, say she wants to organize this retreat online. So it may be the perfect thing for her to do. Maybe it's not a perfect thing for me. I mean, maybe that's not a good example, but you get the idea. Something that she needs to do, how she processes it, only she can process it. Only she can know the motivation. We cannot depend on other people to tell us if this is our, uh, this is the right, this is our motivation, this is not our motivation, this is the right motivation. We have to stay connected with the higher self. You can say the spirit in our heart, God. Because if we stay connected, the time between the confusion and the clarity, it'll get shorter. That's success of life. We cannot overnight get an answer immediately. We will start out with being like this, like Rukmini was saying. I started out five years ago and I thought I had a perfect motivation. 
and now it's becoming oh one year i realized that and then in six months and then in three months and then now it takes me whatever two weeks to realize it and then it should become two hours and then it should become two minutes so that's when we know that we're coming closer to the higher self that we are in touch with the paramatma or the super soul in our heart so these this test when you take this link is calling linked to motivation not necessarily not necessarily the calling is not necessarily linked to motivation but when you take this test you will see that there are categories three different categories and then you will see your path to figuring it out your path to find out see some people just have this nature to be perfectionists maybe you have some people in your life i'm thinking of some of my friends they just their motivation is to find faults you know find something that's not right so they are always constantly looking for that perfection but i know somebody else who's like total show off they are like total show offs they're always showing off you see i got my new i watch you see and this is the latest version and this is how much i paid and even during the lockdown i got it i mean you you get an idea of this type of people right so their motivation is to get that attention get that validation so if you can figure out what is it that you are trying to look for hmm? and then you can actually find out a way to get it in a more healthy way <laughs> then you save a lot of time a lot of energy and then your talents will come out in a sustainable way otherwise this type of people that i just told you the ones who show off things in an innocent way they're not trying to hurt anyone they're not trying to say they may even end up saying oh why did you get where did you get that watch that looks like 1990s <laughs> they can even say such a statement but they don't necessarily want to hurt you but the point is as long as they can recognize as, as long as they don't recognize that they're doing this they're going very far away from their real talent because even if they're great artists or managers the more they start talking about it you see i did this i did that the talent doesn't bloom it, it kind of remains like a yes and I, like rukmini next time she wants to organize an event she'll say i know that this person can do it but you know they just i think they're too high maintenance i'd rather involve this other person who may not know so well than this person who has talent but doesn't have the character to carry that talent along together to manifest the talent we need character that supports it and that's god's way of bringing out the talent within us he makes sure that it's sustainable it helps us and it helps everyone around it's not talent is not something selfish shri there's a few questions do you want to take them now can you can you you please prioritize and ask me and i'll okay so um uh, sunanda sunanda is it sunanda sunanda you had a question yes. should i just read it is that it you can read it you, you can go ahead sunanda oh okay i'll read it um how can we know the decision made it by us is good or bad even if it's bad how can we convert it into a good one well sananda that's not your job <laughs> especially see e bhalo e manda sarva mano dharma in chaitanya charitamrita this is another beautiful text that describes the appearance of lord chaitanya who came to give us wisdom it is said that he says lord chaitanya himself says who is an incarnation of krishna to think that this is good this is bad both are illusion it's just a mental concoction it's a mental speculation so what is good you you know that story of the chinese farmer so there was this chinese farmer and one day um his horse went missing so all the villagers came and they said oh where is your horse it went missing oh bad luck bad luck and then the next day that wild horse came back with four different horses 
to, to his farm. And then all the villagers said, oh, wow, you got four horses, three horses free like this. Such a good luck, such good luck. And then the farmer said, good luck, bad luck, who knows? And then another day, the son, um, the farmer's son was training one of these wild horses that came and he was training and he fell down and broke his leg. So then all the villagers came, bad luck, such a bad luck. So the Chinese farmer, what did he say? Good luck, bad luck, who knows? Then the military came to recruit people in the village. So they were taking all the young and able men they saw the son of the farmer and they said, oh, he has a broken leg. So they did not take the young boy. So then the villagers said, such good luck, such good luck. And what did the farmer say? Good luck, bad luck, who knows? So the point is, we don't know what is good luck or bad luck in our life. Everything is meant for our good. So if Sananda is thinking, if should I join the army forces or should I go and study Sanskrit? Actually, there it's see in the absolute sense, in the developing your talent as a soul sense, there's not so much difference. It's not going to make a big difference to God whether you choose Sanskrit or you join Navy. You see, at the same time, you can think, what is favorable for me? Because you see, thinking of God is very important. But even great demons like Hiranyakashipu and Ravana, they were constantly thinking of God but not in a favorable way. So you have to see good and bad in context of what is favorable for you. What is going to make you feel nourished? What is going to make you feel more connected with God? You know, maybe being with people who are helping you, encouraging you is important. So therefore you have to see which, which one will be good in that situation. So we would have to define good and bad. Okay. I mean, some things are obviously bad, okay? Hurting somebody, harming somebody, hurting yourself, harming yourself, entering into toxic relationships, knowing that it's going to hurt you. All these things are obviously bad. Yes, God can even help and make us more humble even through that. But do we want to learn lessons in a hard way? You know, get punched on the face? Or do we want to learn the lessons in a favorable way? So I would just put that good or bad in a, is it favorable for me? To so think constantly what is favorable for me. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, then there's a question from Avron, which says, how much importance should be placed on people's expectations of ourselves, which does not ne feel necessarily natural um, when we try to meet those expectations? So this is talking about other people expecting, I, I don't understand that question, Rukmini. It seems to be, well, how much of importance should we place on other people's expectations when living up to them doesn't feel, may not feel very natural to us? It depends on who is this person. Is it your spiritual master? Is it your father? Is it who? I mean, I have a, I have a young girl student and if, when I asked her, what would you want if you could get anything and your parents were not restricting you? She said, I want to have a boyfriend. And she's 14. <laughs> so maybe her parents expect her to stay chaste, to stay protected, to be dignified and not just give herself out to boys in an unrestricted way. So that, that particular expectation may be a good thing for her. You see? It's, an, it's one side of an example. Another side I have, like my brother, my parents always expected him to study um, whatever particular subject and he didn't want him to be a cook. My brother loves to cook. He used to cook so well when he was seven years old, he would cook a feast. They didn't encourage him. Because, and my brother did not pursue that because he wanted to fulfill the expectation of my parents. And that was stupid. Because right now he studied what my parents wanted and he doesn't have any interest in it. He doesn't have the heart to do it and he's stuck. So you see, so you have to see if this person's motivation or expectation is based on you being happy or you having a degree or a particular place Mm -hmm. or they want you to be engaged doing something or having something or their motivation is they want you to have a good character they want you to be a person with good character good values 
So you have to gauge their, their expectation, whether it's in the mode of goodness or it's in the mode of passion. But that requires you to be in the mode of goodness. Because if you are in the mode of passion, <laughs> you cannot distinguish whether the other person is expecting. But I mean, if I can be very honest here, very frank here, if I would put myself in the shoes of asking this question, I would ask myself, what is my expectation of, of, of this person? Am I trying to please this person? And is it some sort of codependency? Is it that I am in the mode of passion and ignorance? I'm thinking, I need to have the approval of that person in order to do my job so that I can feel peaceful then I'm not being peaceful in the first place. So doing those things is not going to bring me peace. So I would ask myself, what is my expectation from this person? Why do I want to fulfill an expectation of this person? I hope that helps or maybe it complicates your situation even more, but that's not a bad thing because it means you need to analyze things from a different angle and perspective. Thank you. Um... All right, so the last question I see here is from Bronwyn and it says, does our chakras affect our talents? Um, Bowen, were, were you there for the last session? Okay. So you see, it's not that the chakras are responsible for our talent or our weaknesses or anything. It's just that they are like a mirror. They are like, they reflect our inherent qualities, our inherent cultivation of talents. So talent is something where we put constant energy and attention upon and that develops. It's like a little seed that you cultivate and you germinate and then you water it and you help it grow. So when we speak of talent, it's not just coming from this lifetime. It's something coming from previous lifetimes. We've had so many innumerable lifetimes. We've had like, I mean, how many desires do you have in a day? Do you have a count? Anybody? Any number? <laughs> I mean, I could say hundreds at least, if not thousands. So what to speak of lifetimes of what desires I cultivated? So we have come with this mind, with this talent, with this samskara, with all these vasanas, all these urges we have. We may think, why do I have these things? Because it's something we've been carrying in the subtle body from previous lifetimes. So this chakras or this physical body is a reflection of what has been carrying there. So that's very important to know that the chakras are not responsible, but they can just reflect. But the more we stay in the mode of goodness, we get up early, we take bath, we do meditation, we do yoga, we have good diet, we associate with good people, we edit our lives and don't look at nonsense, don't hear nonsense. All these things, of course, help us to reflect the chakra energies or the talents that we've been carrying more effectively. Again, I don't know if this answers your question or complicates it, but th this kind of topics are very complex, you see. Okay, you were here. So you, you heard more about that reflection and um, how the planets only reflect what we need to work on. It's the reflection of the psyche. So the chakras is also a reflection of our psyche. It's a reflection of our subtle bodies, uh, what we have been working on, good and bad. So in one sense, the chakras also show us those boundaries, those limitations. I think those were the questions, Sri, but you said you had some points that you wanted to round up. So I want to give you some time for that. Sure. Okay. So I want to just summarize this points here. Always look for the deeper motivation in whether you are wanting to discover talent. No, don't try to prove anything to anybody, not to your parents, not to your friends, not even to yourself. Just try to be, try to be the best version of yourself so that you can reach the purpose of your life. And in the process, 
be graceful to accept your limitations. Be graceful to accept that pain as a process that helps you to prevent messing up your life. And remember, talent is something that is connected to the soul. So develop the talents that the soul can carry with you and be there for you. Not just talents that will appear and disappear like summer and winter. Because if we depend on those, then we become sad and then we become comparison. See, comparison, they say comparison is a thief of joy. Usually we think we should be like this. I don't, so those of you who lifted your hand when I said, how many of you think you don't have any talents? I think you are a victim of this. You compare yourself with somebody that you think has a talent and therefore you put yourself down thinking I don't have a talent. And then one last tip I want to give you is this. Before you make a decision, check your human design thing, find out what's your authority center. Don't make decisions based on other people's dreams, other people's ideas about success. Own responsibility. Own that space. Take charge of your life. Don't say because my parents said that, because my friend said that, because of this, because it's like escapism. It's like trying to put responsibility on somebody else. And that In that way, we will never develop our talent. The more we try to learn to take responsibility, the more the talent will bloom. So be emotionally clear that you want it. Thank you so much, Shri, for this session. I think that especially this, this sutra between like being, doing, and having is like, when you first said it, it seemed like, okay, this is um, logical, but how you can apply it in different situations is quite deep, you know, and so such a small principle can be taken on a very deep level if we actually really apply it to our lives, like, and I think like learn more and more. Um, and there is just one question coming in, mm -hmm. uh, but it hasn't been typed yet. Um, if you could please type it in. Um, what if, okay, so the question is, what if you have a responsibility to others? I think this is in terms of um, expectations, you know? So it's saying, what if you are, if you're meant to be, if you have a responsibility towards other people, how then do you just like sort of own your space? I guess that's what it's trying to say. Have you seen the cocoon trying to become a butterfly? If you haven't, go and watch some YouTube videos that shows how the cocoon turns into a butterfly. So it's a beautiful process. And we all need to go through it. Other people cannot have our truth. They cannot show us the truth or what is best for us. They cannot show us even if they have it. We have to realize it for ourselves. And even if we have a responsibility towards other people, maybe we are parents or we are partners. Sometimes we think we are, we own them. <laughs> There's a big difference when we are responsible for somebody's, uh, to be an advisor to somebody and to think that we own this person. In India, especially, or Indian parents tend to have this tendency, they think they own the children. So they try to control the lives of the children and they want them to study in this way, they want them to do it in this way. But in the long run, it never works because it's not a sustainable process. So my it's very easy to say this, but circumstances can be quite difficult, I know that. But the, I mean, if, if, if you have issues with suffering because, somebody you love is doing something wrong and it's not following, I highly recommend this book called Codependent No More by Melody Betty. It's an excellent book that helps people with alcoholic uh, parents or alcoholic partners or people who are doing you know, bad habits and it's hard to control them. So the subtitle of this book is this, 
how to stop controlling others and start taking care of yourself. I know it's a kind of a heavy title, but that book gives you a lot of information on how to, what, what's the best way to help others. It's, it's a very good book. I recommend that you read it. Uh, Shri, there's just one last question. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the screen? Okay, yeah. What is your advice? Um, this is from Rain. Uh, what is your advice to approach those close to you that do not follow a regular spiritual practice? I mean, one word answer, prayer. Prayers are the most powerful way to transform ourselves and others. And I've come to realize that the more I get frustrated because the second part of the, the line says I often, it often frustrates me because I struggle to express myself with fear of being judged. I can totally relate to that. I've done that before. Um, in my experience, it's a way that God is showing us where we need to get a step up in our spiritual faith and in our spiritual advancement. Because when we see other people struggling and it's frustrating us, we're lacking patience, we're lacking tolerance because somebody is not chanting or not doing spiritual things. It's a way that we are shown like a mirror. It's like, how much patience do you have? How much tolerance did you cultivate? How much empathy do you have? How much compassion do you have? So it's a mirror, it's a mirror game. Life is a mirror game. It's, in the Puranas, it is said, Atmavan Manyate Jagat. We tend to see the world because of the reflection of what's within us. If I am a happy, jolly, fun person, I see everybody as happy, jolly, fun type. If I'm kind of depressed and I'm always suspecting everyone, what's your motivation? Why are they so nice to me? I think that everybody is like that. <laughs> so it's a human tendency to project it's called projection so i mean it's not only projection in the negative sense but it can also be a positive way that god is telling us to work on ourselves and in my experience whenever i've taken care of myself i have this thing on my mirror mind your own business <laughs> So I read this every single day and it reminds me the more I try to mind my own business, I don't have to control the other person, but you will see a change in them. You, I, I can assure you of that. Yes, yes, fear of being judged. Yes, the fear of being judged is also another type of Kind of it's in the mode of ignorance because judged by who right and who are they judging who are you so all these things it goes very deep it goes very deep into who are you and why do you why are we afraid of being judged because we want to have a how do you say i, I want to have a reputation that um, nobody judges me and then what's the being aspect if i am if I make peace with myself, then the other person, no matter if they judge, they don't judge. It can be a way that I can improve myself. But the one line answer to you is this. Try to draw boundaries with yourself and with the other person. Try to see where is your limit. Don't go over the limit. If you feel, if you fear being judged, don't go and criticize them or try to correct them because it will only end up hurting you. Okay, so Rukmini's tired and she's yawning and it's an indication <laughs> that we need to end here. No. Um, uh, oh gosh, there's one more question, but maybe we should end it up to you. You tell me. You decide, Rukmini. You're the... Okay, um, let's, let's be kind. If someone has an obvious talent that... And I'm not bored. <laughs> I'm just tired. <laughs> and uh, if someone has an obvious talent that he denies... How can we encourage him to follow it? Time. Give it some time, slowly, patiently. Let that cocoon, don't force that cocoon. You know, if you try to force it, 
oh, the butterfly is struggling to come out. Let me open it a little bit. It will never fly. You understand? It will never fly. So let people go through their own journey. You go through your own journey. And I like what Rain says here. See, smart. Rain, Rain is smart. At the end of the day, only you can judge yourself. Exactly. We cannot let anyone make us feel bad unless we allow ourselves to or we make ourselves feel bad. But again, that doesn't mean we just go around doing things that we're sensitive. They say, you know this, this expression, don't throw a stone at the neighbor's house if you live in a glass house. So if you're a sensitive person, don't go around trying to fix everyone else. On that note, that's very really interesting. <laughs> On that note, thank you so much. Uh, and I can see from the text and stuff in the text box that everybody's really enjoyed this session. Um, and I was thinking a lot this morning about how these self-development sessions um, aid our uh, spiritual growth. And how they go hand in hand because it helps us raise our consciousness and become more self-aware so that we can um, practice yoga with less baggage. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much, you know, for spending this time with us. Um, I'm really grateful. Um, you know, you could be doing a lot of other stuff. Um, and uh, on behalf of the students also, thank you. Um, I don't know if uh, you'd want to, we should share those links, I guess. We'll share these links that, that she sent on the group, the WhatsApp group chat. And yeah, we can also take it further if anybody wants to chat to us so we can uh, share our realizations and reflections together if you want to at any point. Thank you, Shri. Thank you very much. It was a lot of fun. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna. So next up will be Mahatma Prabhu. Am I right? Yeah. With conscious relationships at half past three. Definitely not to be missed. Sure. Okay. Catch you everyone. Catch everyone there.